Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Friyal Khan from Scrumptious Cakes by Fairy and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful carousel cake. Um, I have made this in pink, gold and white. That's what my customer requested to do. Um, but if you want to make it for a boy, you can turn it into uh, baby blue, white and silver. I think that is going to look amazing. And I have used this uh, musical carousel toy on the top. So if you twist it, it makes kind of like a music. Um, this is very simple to make and very easy to follow tutorial. So if you want to see how I'm going to make this, then please keep on watching. So here I have a 12 inch square cake drum or cake board, whatever you call that in your country. And I'm going to take some baking paper or grease proof paper and I am wrapping that around the front part of the cake drum. I'm using my stapler to staple it from the back and make sure that you wrap the paper very tightly. It is not loose at all. Um, I'm just folding the corners and um, I'm just going to staple it. If you follow my tutorials you would know that that's how I do my ganashing for all my cakes. This is the cheapest way actually if you don't want to buy the ganache plate. Here I have a turntable and a cake plate and I'm using the 6 inch cake card. This is the thin card so the thin card is exactly the same size as the cake so I'm using 6 inch cake so that's why I'm using the 6 inch cake card and I'm just uh, leveling my cakes at the moment. Um, once they are leveled uh, I'm going to start filling them up with some buttercream and I'm using four layers of vanilla cake. My cakes usually come out pretty flat so I don't have to chop them a lot. So now I'm taking this six inch cake card. Here I have some ganache. I'm going to spread some ganache and this is going to act as a glue to stick the cake to the cake card. I'm just making sure that the cake is in the center of the card and I'm just pressing the cake a little bit down to make sure that it, it is stuck with the cake card and the ganache. Now I'm spreading some buttercream. Try not to spread the buttercream right till the edges. Just leave a half a centimeter of a gap. Um, now I'm going to take another sponge and just putting it right on the top and making sure it is aligned with the bottom sponge. Now I'm adding buttercream on the second layer um, and I'm using my offset spatula to level the buttercream. As you can see my buttercream is coming over the edges so I had to remove some to have that half a centimeter of a gap. Now I'm adding the third layer of the cake sponge and making sure that my cake sponge is aligned with the other two layers. Adding more buttercream and I am spreading the buttercream with the spatula as I did before and again it is reaching the edges so I am removing some. For the last cake layer I'm going to turn it upside down so I get a very flat top. Now I'm going to put this cake in the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes until the buttercream is set. So I just brought the cake out of the fridge after 30 minutes. Now I'm going to ganache the cake. The buttercream is actually set. Now I'm taking the white chocolate ganache and I'm pushing the ganache into that space we left around the buttercream. So this ganache is going to act as a dam around the buttercream and will prevent any bulging. I'm going to link the recipe of my white chocolate ganache in the description down below if you guys want to check that out. I'm just uh, crumb coating the cake at the moment and pushing the ganache uh, into that space. Now I'm going to add some ganache on the top of the cake and I'm going to spread it with the palette knife. Now I'm going to take that square board which we covered with baking paper earlier and I'm going to put that board over the top of the cake. Now I'm going to flip this over. You need to hold the cake tightly from the top and the bottom and flip the cake. Now remove this cake plate and we are going to ganache our cake onto this board upside down. Now I'm going to spread the ganache around the sides of the cake. You don't have to be very precise, you just need to cover the sides with generous amount of ganache and then we are going to take our side scraper to smooth that out. So I'm going to take this acrylic side scraper from Cake Craft Company. I absolutely love this product 
and I'm going to put this cake um, scraper at a 90 degree angle uh, and slowly moving the turntable and scraping the ganache from the sides. Make sure that on every scrape you remove the ganache from the scraper. So now I can see some holes around the cake so I'm just filling in those holes with more ganache and then I'm going to scrape the sides again. So once all the holes and gaps were filled with the ganache, I'm taking my side scraper again and keeping it at 90 degree angle and slowly moving my turntable to scrape the sides around. I will repeat the same process until I am completely happy with the end result of the cake. So once you are happy with your ganache, you need to uh, chill the cake in the fridge for about an hour until the ganache is set hard. So I took the cake out of the fridge after an hour and the ganache is set hard. Now I'm going to take that uh, cake plate again and I'm going to flip it back. Um, as the ganache is set, so we should be able to remove um, our cake drum neatly. As you can see, there is no ganache on that board. Now I can see some holes around the edges of the top, so I'm spreading a little bit of ganache, smooth that ganache out. Now I'm going to take that side scraper and I'm going to remove the excess ganache which is um, hanging over the edges of the cake. Now I'm going to put the cake aside and I'm going to clean that cake drum and I'm going to remove the ganache from that um, cake drum because we are going to reuse this when we are going to cover the cake with fondant. You can totally wrap the new paper around if you wish to but I just like reusing it without wasting any more material. Now I'm taking some plain water and a brush and I'm brushing the water over the cake and this will help us uh, to stick the fondant to the cake. Now I'm going to brush some water over the cake drum, uh, which we are going to cover with fondant as well. I'm needing some white fondant, um, which we are going to use to cover the board. I'm going to roll it about quarter centimeter thickness. Now I'm going to put the rolled fondant over the cake drum and I'm going to use a smoother to smooth it out, making sure that there are no air bubbles. Cut the excess fondant with the knife. Now I'm needing 750 grams of pink color fondant and I'm going to roll it out about quarter centimeter thickness. So fold your fondant over the rolling pin and take the cake and unroll the fondant over your cake. And I'm going to smooth the top first, making sure that we don't have any air trapped on the top. And then I'm going to quickly attach the fondant around the edges making sure that it is not going to start breaking up around the edges which usually happens when you are doing the sharp edges cake. Um, then what I'm doing is I'm just spreading um, the pleats uh, which you can see um, and then keep smoothing from my hands making sure that there are no pleats at all. Just keep spreading the pleats from the bottom of the fondant and keep smoothing from the top to bottom. Start from the top and then going down like I'm doing it right now, uh, making sure that there are no air bubbles trapped. We start from the top and then go down to the bottom to make sure that we don't trap any air um, underneath the fondant. So once the cake is covered with fondant, I'm going to take this smoother and roughly smooth the cake out. Now I'm going to take the knife and cut the excess fondant around. Now I'm taking that clean board and I'm going to flip the cake again upside down. Now I'm taking my favorite estate smoothers which I bought from Shirin's Cakes and Bakes and I'm taking two large and one small and with one small I'm smoothing the edges of the cake. I'm putting a little bit of pressure so the fondant can push down a little bit and create a sharp edge. 
I can see some tiny air bubbles so I'm popping them with a sterilized needle and then I'm using my large acetate smoother to smooth the hole out. Now I'm smoothing um, the sides of the cake with the large um, smoother as you can see. So after smoothing you might have some excess fondant coming over the cake card so you need to chop that off. I'm going to flip the cake back and then I'm going to use uh, these two smoothers, one large and one small one. The large one I'm going to put on the top and the small one I'm going to put around the side and I'm going to move my hand simultaneously so both of the smoothers move at the same time, putting the pressure around the edges to create a super sharp edge. I'm taking a six inch cake card to make an indentation um, over the cake drum which we covered with fondant earlier. I'm spreading some ganache um, so the cake can stick to the board. Now I'm taking two large smoother and holding the cake around the sides and um, moving the cake over the cake board where we made the indentation. Smooth the cake one more time with the other smoother. I will use some of these Baroque molds um, for the border of my cake. I'm putting some icing sugar into the mold and then I'm going to tap off the excess icing sugar. I'm taking the same pink color fondant which we used on the cake. I am just mix some Tylos powder to make the fondant a little bit firmer and stretchy. Now I'm taking the knife and chopping off the excess fondant and I'm going to use my finger to smooth out the edges to get a clean um, molded fondant. Now I'm going to gently push the design out as you can see and I'm going to move this on the board and I'm going to make a lot of them. Now I'm taking the other mold which I need for the top border and I'm going to make a lot of this design as well. So you need to make enough to go around the edges. Don't shy to make some extra because sometimes they do break while you are putting them on the cake. Make sure you use the same color fondant you used for the cake in case when you paint over and you miss some of the design so it is not going to show up a lot. If you're going to use any other color fondant it might show up very badly so that is one trick which I want to share with you. So I have used some plain water to stick my scrolls around the uh, border of my cake. Now I'm using this bigger design to stick around the edges of the cake on the top as you can see. So I'm just using some plain water to stick the fondant. So I have got an oval white plaque to go at the front of the cake. Uh, I'm brushing some plain water to stick it at the front of the cake and I'm going to use a smoother to smooth that out. Now I'm taking the same scroll design which we use around the border of the cake and I'm making a border around this plaque as well to make it like a frame and then I'm going to use these embossers um, to print the name in the center. So I'm just going to take the alphabets one by one and I'm going to press it down over the fresh fondant and it will make an indentation of that letter and then later on we are going to paint that indentation with the gold paint. So I will first print her name Amelia and then I will use a smaller um, embossers to print turns one. So now I'm using the smaller um, size embossers to imprint turns one and I will try to link both the products in the description box below. Now I'm going to paint over the border and the name with the Phi Kai Luster Dust. I hope I'm saying the name right. Um, you can mix this luster dust with um, dipping solution or lemon extract. Now I'm using a super fine um, paint brush. I think it's either double zero or triple zero number. Um, you need a very fine brush to paint inside the indentation. You need to be very very calm and very very um, precise when you are doing this work. So I'm just painting inside 
the indentation as you can see because the cake was in a very odd angle in front of me I ended up imposing the name and the message a little bit off-centered as you can see so please ignore that so I bought this musical carousel toy to go over the cake I bought it from eBay so I'm going to clean that up with an antibacterial wipe before I put it over the cake so here is our finished cake. I really hope you like this tutorial and if you did then please don't forget to hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already then please do consider subscribing and press the notification bell button so you can get notified whenever I upload new videos. So yeah that's it for now and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!